Hello, everybody, and welcome to Entrepreneurs International Network. My name is Iman Agai, the founder of Entrepreneurs International Network, and your host for today's session. And I'm super excited about today's meeting because we are going to have the amazing Janelle Anderson, who is going to talk about the secrets about organizing virtual events. As many of you know, virtual events have become a very important part of uh, the business of coaches, authors, speakers, program leaders, and uh, they practically transform the world of uh, transformational leadership and 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 the and the coaching business. So mm -hmm. I'm super super excited for having the amazing Janelle Anderson joining us today because Janelle is one of the experts that helps people with organizing these events. She's been part of many many events and uh, and has helped many of these events to create success and, and attract quality people to themselves and all of those things. So I'm very excited uh, for that. Janelle, how are you doing today? Doing great. I'm glad to be here. Love talking about events, especially virtual events, because they're so easy yeah. and fun. <laughs> awesome. 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 So uh, before I get any further, uh, tell us a little bit about your story, like how you got involved with the uh, virtual events, like just tell us a little bit more about that and then and then yeah. we get started yeah yeah so i well i've been coaching 10 years today i'm not today but this month <laughs> this month is my 10 year anniversary uh, in business and when i first started that was one of the first things i did was i thought how can i get in front of more of my clients at one time and i was walking by the local library once on my lunch break from my job and I thought, what about if I did a workshop in the library? And I went in there and asked them if I could. And they were like, sure. And we'll even promote it for you. So I was like, that's super. So they started promoting. And I think that first workshop, I had about 15 people in the room and got a couple of clients out of it. And I thought, this is great. So I've always been doing events. They, they were in person. I did a whole series of workshops in my area. And then, of course, COVID hit. Um, and so then I went online and I started doing a lot more online than I had been doing before. And like you said, started working with people on their event teams and just learned everything I could about it. And I just have been hooked from the beginning on running events. Um, and so in the last few years, I decided that I should focus on that. And so here I am. Uh, so I just really love running events. I love connecting with people and letting them have a wonderful time and an experience and and then from there, my business grows. So I want to help other coaches do the same thing. Awesome. 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 Perfect. So, uh, Janelle, um, when it comes to doing virtual events, number one, first, let's talk about like who are the people that uh, can benefit the most from virtual events and even why virtual events in the first place? Yeah. So <clears throat> virtual events, as opposed to in person, are for many reasons, a lot easier for a coach or somebody in business to host because you can just go to the corner of your own home. I'm sitting here in my basement in front of my computer and uh, invite people in from all over the world. And it's uh, convenient for the attendees. They don't have to travel. They don't have to pay money to travel and they can just hop on their computer. And it's also something that people are really used to doing now and feel really comfortable doing. And the whole industry has grown uh, hugely since COVID. And I read somewhere that it's projected to be a $400 billion industry by 27. So it's a place you can make really good money and you can build your tribe and you can find new clients and you can all do it all, you know, very conveniently. So that's why virtual events and it's good for coaches or experts or, um, uh, program leaders, anybody who's trying to build an online business, especially, or who wants to, uh, you know, work with people in, in a deep way and transform their lives in some way that they have some kind of expertise to share. It's a great way to bring people together into a room with you, to meet you, connect with you. And you have, instead of one person at a time, you have maybe 20 or five or 10, or, you know, you have a group of people in front of you and you get to know them. They get to know you. So it works really well. You said an amazing thing. It's a, it's going to be a four hundred billion, billion dollar industry. Okay, because yes. like the coaching industry is a seven billion dollar industry. So just understanding that the virtual mm -hmm. events is a four hundred, like going to be a four hundred billion dollar industry means like it's significantly larger 
uh, than uh, than just coaching. And mm -hmm. I think that's one of the things that uh, many people who are coaches need to know that coaching is great as a skill uh, to be added to all the other things that you do as a business owner, but uh, coaching is not an entire, I mean, I mean, it can be an entire business, but it's not the only way that you can build your business. So that's actually really great. Um, yeah. You even know that and understand that. That's amazing. It is amazing to really wrap your head around that. <clears throat> and I always say to coaches that coaching in itself is really not a business. It's what you do in your business, but it's not a business. But you have to have a business around your coaching to, mm -hmm. you know, flourish and grow and thrive as a coach and to be able to have that opportunity to have deep, comp deep uh, transformation, deep connections with people to get them into your world and to create a sustainable income. Um, it, you need to have other things around your business, right? Other than just coaching. Okay. Amazing. Awesome. Now, many people struggle with choosing the right workshop topic, right virtual event topic. Uh, what's the key to selecting a topic that really resonates with the target audience? So, yeah, so you really need to know your audience and what they're looking for, what is top of mind for them, what what they're interested in, what do they want to learn, what what are their, you know, dream outcomes, what are the pain points they're struggling with. So knowing your audience is key, doing lots of market research, talking to people that are in your audience so that you know you're not just picking a topic out of the air. You really need to know who your people are. Find mm -hmm. out from them, ask them questions, find people that are in your audience and ask them some questions like what are what are the things that you really want to achieve? What, what are your uh, dreams and goals and visions and what are some things you're interested in learning about and just start like a, I had like a list of topics that um, my audience wants to learn about. Another thing that I encourage people to do is to not worry about perfection. Because mm -hmm. sometimes you can try out different topics and use it as like an experiment. Let me try this topic and see how this resonates. I That's what I did. I would just pick a topic and see who came, see who was interested in it. Uh, some mm -hmm. people want to have that all nailed down before they do a workshop. But in my experience, the more that you actually put yourself out there and do a virtual workshop of some kind, the more you'll learn how to do it. So don't wait till it's perfect, but definitely, you know, go find out what your people are interested in in learning about. See what uh, is a hot topic for them. You know, what really resonates, what gets their attention, what are they commenting on in, you know, social media or, you know, if you schedule some interviews with people and find out what they're interested in, get to know that and then pick one of those topics and try it out. See what happens. Okay. Awesome. You know, I actually have a question for you. I want to know your experience, because as you know, we do a lot of virtual events uh, in Action Era, in Entrepreneurs International Network, in all my different businesses. We do we do about like 200 to 300 virtual events a year. Yeah. And um, and I see a trend, but I want to see like if that res uh, if also that's aligned with what you see uh, in the market. Uh, many times people, when they start doing an event, they um, they do very generic topics for their events um, uh, in the hope to attract a lot more people. And um, and some people do very specific topics. Um, in your experience, which one has been working or if both have been working but for different reasons? Uh, tell us a little more about do we go generic topic or do we go specific topic and for what purpose we go what? Yeah, so I I always say do specific, and you know, also it, a lot of it depends on how long you, of how long of an event you're doing. If you're doing like a ninety minute webinar slash workshop uh, versus a three day, your mm -hmm. topic might uh, not. It would it should always be specific. But in a, a three day event, a longer event, or a full day event, you're going to have obviously a lot more deep dive into the topic, but less is more actually mm -hmm. and the more specific that you are the more people will be interested and will show up and again that's why you know really knowing what your audience is looking for helps but one of the biggest lessons i have learned is less is more i am a teacher i was a teacher for many years and so i like to bring a lot and teach everybody everything i know that tends to be my default but i've learned to take out like 90 percent of what i thought i was going to put in the, into the uh, topic or into the content 
and let people take time to explore it and let people engage and interact with that very specific and keeping it simple. You'd mm. be surprised at how much more people get out of your event, the simpler the topic is. And it feels counterintuitive to us as experts because we're like, there's so much more, but the people participating will get more out of it if you keep it simple and very, very specific around something very achievable, something they feel like they can really wrap their head around, that they feel like they accomplished something or have a takeaway that they can actually use and have a deeper understanding of it than if you try to give them tons of information that they just can't take in. Right. I think in my experience, the way that we see it is that um, people are tired of generic topics or mm -hmm. they want to study generic topics on social media, like how mm -hmm. to generate income from your, uh, from your business would be a very generic topic. Now, like yeah. that would be something that people want to see it on social media and things like that. But if they want to go to an event and they want to go, I uh, want to sit there and take notes and other things, mm -hmm. whether it's a one hour event or like a three day event, uh, they want it to be specific about a particular challenge they have. Uh, yeah. So they walk away with a step-by-step -step system, with a process, with something that they can easily implement. Like I remember when, uh, like, for example, if we do an event, like a three-day event called How to Generate Money from Your Business, uh, probably we are going to have much less people signing up. Or even if we get a lot of people sign up, we're going to have much much lower number of show up rate. And, right. and even during the event will make it harder for us to teach because, well, now we don't know if they're going to have a bakery or they're going to be a coach. And so we can't really focus on one specific topic, which results into much lower sales also by the end of the workshop. Right. But if we name it like how to build your webinar funnel, yeah. um, if we have like 40 registrants, we're going to have like 25 or 30 show ups. And, and, and then at the end, if we have an offer that say, for example, let us help you build your funnels, uh, like four or five or six of them would sign up as opposed to if it was a generic thing, maybe only one person signs up and nobody signs up for that higher end program or whatever program that you're offering. So for us, always generic, always, always uh, specific works better. Um, Much better. Days oh. As well, yeah. But many people that are beginning are concerned mm -hmm. about the specific, right? They're like, well, what if not everybody wants to learn it? And they don't show up. And that's totally fine. You're just showing up and have like five people, but the five people will be very specific and aligned and, and, and focused on one thing. Awesome. 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 Thank you. Yeah. Um, yeah. Now, now let's say, and now we decided on the topic, <laughs> okay? How do we structure the workshop in a way that keeps the audience engaged from start to finish? So there's lots of ways to keep people engaged, but uh, when you plan your content from start to finish, I always think of a, a an event, I always use the analogy that it's like a road trip and you're getting everybody in the car with you and you're going on a trip and you're having an adventure, you want to give them an experience. They're not there to just learn information. Like you said, they can go get that from social media or they can read a book, but they want to have an experience. They want to have uh, an adventure with you. I think of it as an adventure, like, even even though I might plan out my content, the people attending, if I'm getting them engaged with me, then they kind of shape the event too by what they're contributing and how they're experiencing it. And it becomes this really cool like bonding community thing and people feel really good because they were able to interact and uh, they, they go away feeling like, wow, I got so much out of that because I was able to do some brainstorming and interacting with you. And that's another reason to keep it specific around one topic. So the more you can engage them with your content, the more that you can let them experience your information for themselves. Like, how does this apply to me? How do I use this in my life? The more engaged they will be. So I think of it as we're going on an adventure, but we need to know where we're going. So we need to know what the uh, goal is. What's the destination here? And that should always be your offer. And so you, you as the host, you need to know where you're taking people and plan your content from start to finish to bring everyone to that destination, whatever the offer you're going to be making. So just like that example you gave, you know, if it was about building a funnel and that's your, that's your offer. So then you want to plan the event in such a way content wise that it's like taking them step by step to, of course, they're going to want your offer. 
because it's so synchronistic to everything that you just shared with them. And if they have had an experience with your content, if they've been able to interact in some way, uh, do an exercise with you, let's think about, you know, your funnels, what, what kind of funnel is it and have them work on it, give them some steps and they sit there and work on it for a few minutes and then come and share. What did you come up with? And any questions and you're getting them involved with you, then of course they're going to be like, well, I want to keep working with this person. So I always say, start with the offer. That's your destination. That's where you're taking people, but give them a fun adventure along the way, get them involved. It's like on a road trip, everybody's chatting with each other and having a good time. And maybe you stop and go off on an excursion, give them a few minutes to work on something and come back and share. And that way they will be with you from start to finish. Okay. So it seems that if you want to look at it from a step-by-step -step point of view, uh, step one is even thinking about like, what's my call to action at the end of the event, even before choosing what the topic of the event is going to be or or like okay. anything else, like, like step one, Choose what it is that you want to offer at the event. Yep. Step two, see what topic for the uh, what topic would attract people who would have the need for the offer. And step three, see how you can take them from the topic that attracted them all the way to the offer, right? So right. I would like you want to look at it as a step-by-step -step process. Start with the call to action at the end, like what it is that you want mm -hmm. to do. Then after that, choose the topic that would attract those people. And then yeah. step three would be would we now structure the content, right? Yeah, it's like reverse engineering, right? Start with the end in mind. Right, right. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome, awesome. Plan everything that way. I used to do it the opposite. When I first started, <laughs> I would just pick a topic. Oh, this is an interesting topic. I could create an interesting uh, workshop around this, having a teaching background. And then I didn't have an offer or it didn't match the offer and it, there was like a disconnect there. So yeah, start with your offer, what your call to action is, reverse engineer everything from there so that it just is seamless and, you know, really shows the people how they need what you're offering. That's the big part of it, right? You need to create that or tap into the desire people have from, like you said, you're attracting them to this topic. It matches the offer. What is the desire they have that your whole content builds on so that it's, you know, naturally I want that, you know, that's definitely in the next step. Awesome. So here's the thing, uh, Janelle, um, you and I both right now are coming back from a trip, right? Mm -hmm. So, uh, so just, uh, for everybody to know, like both Janelle and I were spending the last Friday, Saturday, Sunday at an event called JV Experience Live, which was in Loveland, Colorado. And uh, this is actually our event at uh, Next Gen Collaboration Circle, which is one of my companies. And so Janelle was there, was attending the event, uh, like we had lots of other organizers of events and summits and conferences all already attending. Um, I was talking to somebody today and I said, uh, in the last three day event, like in, like literally in three days, I only had two and a half hours of presentation. And mm -hmm. like, she suddenly stopped and she's like, you're kidding me, right? I'm like, no, no, seriously. Like I just did two and a half hours of presentation in the entire three day. And then uh, like, she couldn't believe it. And I just counted for her. I'm like, no, seriously. Like that's, that's all I did in three days. And yet everybody thought I'm everywhere. Like everybody thought that like I'm running the entire three day event. Um, now you <laughs> as the expert, like, you know, that of course, right. That's it's like, well, you don't have to have the entire content of your three day event. Right. So yeah. tell us a little bit more about like, like, because that's the concern that a lot of people have. Right. Like, yep. like I gotta have content if I want to do like three day event, mm -hmm. I have like 27 hours of content okay but right. what other choices people have like besides just having their content that they sit there and teach people for nine hours because you talked about all this experience but like what are the type of things that we can create that gives people the experience without really needing to have 27 hours out seven hours of content for three days absolutely you uh like i was talking about uh creating an experience so let's say you teach a this is a really good example. My last event, uh, I was working with um, somebody helping me in my event. And my plan was to teach people 
how to make money from their events. And I had all this content lined out and she's like, no, just pick one of those. And I'm like, how will I spend an hour and a half on one of these? But it was awesome because, um, I said, here's a bunch of ways you can create uh, income from your events, but let's talk about this one. And I I shared a little bit about it, maybe 15 or 20 minutes. And then I said, well, what do you guys think? Let's brainstorm about you. It was about sponsorship. So bringing in sponsors and sponsored speakers. And so I got them thinking about their own events and what would be a good person that would maybe uh, align, what type of person could you uh, bring in, you know, and they started brainstorming and throwing stuff in the chat and coming on screen and sharing their ideas. And I'm like, wow. So we spent like an hour and a half. They were doing most of the creating of the content. And they were highly engaged. And they said at the end of that session, like, that was so good. Mm -hmm. And I'm sitting there thinking, I hardly said anything. So that's one way. And then, of course, bringing in other speakers, other experts who can share something on the topic that maybe you don't, but could add value to your people. And you can bring in guest speakers. You can have um, speakers that that sponsor your event and pay for the chance to speak. You can... You can have all kinds of activities for people to do. Uh, they can get into breakout rooms and share with each other. I do a lot of hot seats in the middle of my event. So, okay, we've been working on this. Who wants to share and come up and share with me? And I'll give you feedback in a hot seat kind of thing. And everybody gets a lot out of that. And the person that comes up to the hot seat gets a ton out of it. You know, uh, you can have them go do something. I used to do a, an event on storytelling. And so I would show these pictures just random pictures on slides. And I'd have them like, just unmute and give me a description because we were talking about describing a scene in your stories and uh, using all the sense words or the emotion words or whatever. And I would have them just like pop on and, and give their, um, give their you know, example of how you would you describe the scene or how would you describe the emotions? And it was really fun. People just, you know, so you can do really, uh, a lot of activity type of things that get people involved that uses up a lot of time. Give them an assignment to go do for half an hour, a working break, play some nice music and they go work on something you've been teaching them. And then yeah. they come back and talk about it and go into a breakout room and spend a lot of time. That's that interaction. That's that experience they're having with your content. So you end up not having a lot of content at all, but you're giving them an amazing experience. Yeah, and you're you're creating massive transformation without yeah. a ton of your without 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 a ton of content. So content doesn't change people's lives. It's the yeah. experience that actually creates that impact. So many okay. times I follow this framework uh, for my events or my classes that I teach for 10, 15, 20 minutes. Then I do some QA for another like however long they need because sometimes they have two hours of question on the 15 minute thing that I taught and sometimes they need like two minutes for the question or some, sometimes they don't have a question right yeah. but like uh, 15 20 minutes of teaching a Q&A session and then an exercise time depending on how long they need to be able to implement what I just taught them and then uh, I'll do a group share. So after they come back from exercise, I put them in groups of four or five or two by two, like one by one, depending on like what, what they did. And then get them to exercise with each other for another like 10, 15 min minutes, depending on what it is. So we call it pair and share exercise. And then after they come back, we do a, we do a, a sh group share, meaning that they raise their hand and they each of them share. And like literally sometimes with a 15 to 20 minute piece of content, we have like three to four hours yeah. of an event. <clears throat> and I like by the end of the four hours, they're like, this is the most valuable event we've ever attended. Yep. And uh, it's just because uh, we provided the context, a little bit of content, but the rest of it were a container for them to process what they were learning. And, and it creates all these life-changing, amazing experiences for people. And of course, as you said, hot seats and, uh, and, and guest experts and panels and all of those type of things and, um, and networking opportunities and so on and so forth during an event. Yeah, there's, I like how you said the container. I always say, you know, you're really, you're really holding space for people to have a transformation. That's what your job is as the event host. Your job isn't really to teach them a bunch of stuff. It's you're your, your actually holding space and you're creating that container 
for them to have an experience. And if you can approach it that way, it opens up a whole new world for you as the host. And it makes it very doable and very possible because you don't have to talk the whole time. You're, you're letting them experience and they bring a lot with them. I always tell people in my events, like you shape this event by what you share and what you experience in this space. And it might go a different direction than what I thought, but it's, it's always interesting to see what happens, you know, when you, when you let people have a, um, a big piece and a big part inside of your event. Um, Yeah. And so that's a good structure. What you just said, I, I do the same thing pretty much. Just teach for a little bit, let them go off and do an exercise, give them a specific exercise to do, answer these questions, go spend some time journaling on this, or, you know, go do some research specific little uh, task or, you know, assignment, and then come back and share what you've learned with each other and then share in the big room. And that ends up being a couple hours at least. So, yeah. 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 Uh, now, now here's the thing. Uh, many people that are beginning or uh, even lots of uh, perfectionists that have been doing this for years, uh, <laughs> they get stuck with this idea that uh, what if people have heard this before, right? Like, right. for example, mm-hmm. like, like if a person has watched my TEDx talk, and they come to my event. Now I'm like, well, this person has watched my TEDx talk. Why would I tell my story again? Because they've heard it in my TED talk, right? right. But um, but you and I know that there is a little bit more to that. Like if people have heard it ag- before, they can hear it again. Can you talk about that a little bit? Like to just remove that concern. That's okay. Mm-hmm. You can hear it mm-hmm. multiple times. Definitely. I mean, I know that from a teacher, repetition is how people learn. And often when they hear the same thing again, it might be the fifth or sixth time they've heard it, but they're in a different place when they hear it again. And so they pick up something different or they understand it in a deeper way. And they'll be like, oh, I didn't hear that last time. This time it makes sense because now I'm here. And there's always, I know when I've heard your stories, I don't know how many times and every time I get something different out of that out of it. So even the same content, um, it, you you should never worry about that because people will, everybody's going to hear a different thing anyway, in the same story or in the same bit of content, everybody's going to pick up something different for them. And then the next time they're going to pick up something different and, and they'll be like, I didn't hear you. Did you ever share that before? I never heard that before. And you're like, I've shared it a hundred (laughs) times. So, yeah. And, and people do learn it, you know, learn when they repeat, when you, uh, they learn from repetition, uh, because our minds are everywhere. Right. And maybe, uh, we, we didn't hear it the first time or we didn't quite catch it the first time or even the fifth time. So, yeah. Yeah. Now, one common concern is attracting the right uh, right attendees to the event. So what's your advice for filling workshops with people who are eager to participate? Yeah, so important. This is one of the top mistakes, I think, common mistakes people make when they are doing events is they just invite everybody and anybody, and then they don't have the right people in the room. So if you don't have the right people in the room for you, your offer's not going to land and They might have a great time and go away and say, oh, great time. Thanks a lot, Janelle, for that. But then they don't uh, step into your offer um, because it wasn't, they weren't the right people. So it's important that you, when you are planning your event that like we talked about it being specific, make sure it's specific to the audience you want to work with, know your audience really well. But also when you're promoting it, I like to do a lot of speaking myself before my event. So I'll get on other people's summits and stages and I get on those stages that are in front of the people I want to come to my event. And if I'm promoting a a giveaway too, I'll get in giveaways as well. And I'm making sure uh, because my I want to attract coaches to my event. So I'm looking for giveaways and summits that have that audience in it because that's who I want in my event. So in whatever, you know, promotion that you're doing, make sure that you're promoting it to the right people. Um, And you can use, you know, promotional partners as well. You can ask people to promote it for you, but make sure that they have that audience Mm -hmm. so that you are attracting. And then the topic and uh, the topic and the, um, the name of the event 
the promise of the event should all be speaking to those people that you want to have in the to come and the the pain problem or the you know, what they want to achieve it speaks to that the title and the subtitle uh will draw in the right people as well if you get it really specific and really um speaking to the result the outcome why should they come people are wondering you know why should i spend my time at that at your event why should i take the time to come and spend with you well it's for them what's in it for them that's what they that's what they're thinking about how what am i going to get out of this you know how is this going to help me achieve this goal and so you know really make sure your topic is your title and your uh subtitle are really hot and specific and then um gear it point it towards those people so that you have the right people in the room. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Um, now the next one, you mentioned that workshops need uh, to not only attract people, but also convert them into paying clients. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, how does someone ensure that their workshop mm -hmm. leads to real results and profits? Well, it goes back to that offer, uh, making sure that the offer is what uh, is, is uh, clear and, um, it fills that gap. So you, you invite them to a workshop around a topic, but then there's more. <laughs> One mistake I've made is giving them everything and then they walk away like, well, thanks. Now I can go do it on my own. You want to give them <laughs> enough that they feel like, yeah, that was good. I got a lot out of that, but there's more. I know there's more. And, and that does take, um, that takes some intention and in how you plan how the event goes and the, how the content will flow. So there's some crafting there. There's almost a story that goes that threads throughout the event and leads them to this place of feeling the gap, like knowing that there's more and then, Oh, here's, here's what you need next. And guess what? That's what I'm offering. So that the offer matches really well with everything you've been having them do within the event but they know there's more. I didn't get everything. I, I want to do this. I can do a piece of it, but it's just a piece of it. And here's the next step. And then you're making this invitation to work with you to get that more that you've created in their minds that that's out there. Right. So there's a story, you know, the story of the event of their journey and uh, what they're needing in their life. Like for me, it's, it's coaches who are trying to build a thriving business, but they don't like to market and they don't like to sell. And so throughout my whole event, I'm speaking to them about, uh, how they, the using events can attract to them people and they get to know them and they build relationship because coaches are really heart centered and they want to build relationship. But you know, how do you do that? when you don't, all you know is coaching, you don't know how to sell and you don't know how to market. You need these other skills, right? So we've done a little bit of work today, but here's the more that you need. And guess what? I can provide it, you know? So um, that's how you monetize your event. You create a really uh, compelling offer that really answers the questions in their minds of what, how do I do this, right? How do I make this happen? and then um, invite them into it with you. Can, can you tell us a little bit about the price points of offers? What price mm -hmm. points of offers do you suggest for what type of events? Yeah. So usually like a webinar style or workshop style event, 90 minutes or two hours, your your offer should be somewhere in the neighborhood of 500 to maybe 2,000, 2,500 maybe. Uh, a course usually, or maybe it's a coaching program that's three months or something like that. Um, uh, that would be your signature program that introduces people to you. You, you don't, you can't sell from if new people coming into your event, a, a really high, higher end than that, because there just isn't enough time to build that relationship with you. But if you offer something 500 to 2,500, then they come in and work with you for that period of time. Maybe it's six, eight weeks in a course. Now you're building more relationship and now they're ready to move to the next step. In a three-day event, you've got a lot more time to uh, work with them. And especially if you've already worked with them for six weeks in a course, and then they come to your three-day event, now you've had a lot more time. Uh, you've helped them with maybe one piece of your big high-end program. If, say you offer are a whole year, maybe you offer an entire year where they go deep with you. Um, then you take one piece of that and make that your signature program. 
And now it's makes sense that, you know, I need, I need more for those people that really want to go deep with you. So you can offer that in a three-day event. You can offer a 10K, a 15K. Some people you can do 20, 25, uh, year-long deep dive, very, um, you know, transformational. You have a, a much more deeper transformation with them when they work with you for an entire year. You can add in a whole lot more uh, that you offer. You can, that's where you can bring them everything you have. <laughs> and so a three-day event is really good for that because you have a lot more time to dive in deep with them and for them to get to know you and what you have to offer in the three-day event really is set up so that it's kind of like a preview of what your higher end would be. And you give them a little taste of it and let them experience some of that. But to really have the full transformation, then, you know, they would want to step into the bigger higher the accountability support discipline yeah, the support oh, the accountability oh, yeah. um all the resources um the community that is all what they need right to actually have uh achieve the results that they need they can't do it on their own so your offer brings in that support and that community that accountability everything they need to actually get results um and that's what makes that higher end program so attractive is because most people can and I used to do this give them so much in my three-day event that they felt like they could do it on their own but I knew they couldn't but they felt like they could so I had to actually take out a lot of stuff and let them go deeper with a little bit and then say okay if you really want to make this happen if you really want to achieve you need you need that support and here's the support here's the accountability we're going to meet every other week you're going to have this you're going to have that uh, and so really paint that picture for them of what they can achieve uh, with you in that deeper or that higher end program. But you can't really do that in a short mm -hmm. workshop type of event, or even in a one day, you wouldn't be able to offer uh, a 10 to 25 K program. Uh, it needs to be at least three days. Awesome. Um, now um, a question about the, uh, technological complexity of this <laughs> uh, because that's also something that people are concerned about they're like oh my god i don't know i'm not good with technology i don't know like what to set up and how to do it and other things <laughs> especially if they come to events like our events where we have like a lot of technological things you're in the background and everything like that can scare people uh yeah. but um talk about the tech like like how how complicated does it need to be technologically and like all things like that yeah. I mean, when you're first starting out, it does not need to be complicated. My first even three day events, I just did on my own uh, for the first couple of them. And then I had a VA helping me, which I do recommend if you have somebody that can help you run the Zoom and, or, you know, answer people's questions in the chat and drop links for you, even a friend. Mm -hmm. So you can run a really nice event on Zoom with a friend helping you and that's really all you need. A good microphone, decent camera, and a light in front of you and a Zoom room. And that's really all you need to start with. And a lot of my workshops that I do for that are an hour and a half to two hours, I just do on my own just with, with Zoom. Yeah. Zoom has so many great features that you can run a really nice event. You don't need to have all the extras, like the music and the MC and the all that stuff. You don't need that right at the at the beginning when you feel more comfortable and you've grown and you can have a team great but you can give people a great experience just you and zoom and and the chat and you have breakout rooms and if you know zoom you know i do recommend using zoom because it's one that everybody's familiar with and there's a ton of great features in there that can give people a great experience so most people are familiar with it they know how to raise their hands and you're comfortable with breakout rooms what else do you need right awesome. yeah awesome yeah awesome. perfect um now in terms of um in terms of like an example can you give us an example of someone that has like um like you have worked with to go through this experience and like like what that would what that, what that looks like like give us a story of like like mm -hmm. an example yeah, yeah. I've, I'll talk to you about Monique. So um, she is a friend of mine. We were in Iman's group for years, but she kept putting off running her event. She said she put it off for like three years. 
And she kept saying, I want to do an event, but she was an opera singer, an award-winning Grammy nominated award, wow. uh, opera singer. Right. And you would think she'd be totally confident to have her own event, but what happened was because in her background, everybody did all the work for her and all she had to do was show up and sing. And uh, so she was really stopped by the technology like we just talked about. And will anybody show up? And what do I do? And how do I put it together? I don't even know. You know, so she kept putting it off and putting it off. And I kept saying, Monique, you got to do your event. It's going to be amazing because you're amazing. And she would put it on her calendar, move it. And then it would start to get close. So I got to move it again, all these excuses. And finally, this past year, it's like, okay, Monique, we're doing your event. I'm going to help you. I'm going to be in the room with you. And she's like, you will? And I'm like, yes. <laughs> and that that helped her to say, okay, I'm going to do it. And I brought my VA with me. So it was me, my VA, and, and Monique. And she did all the content, put all that together. We, I helped her a little bit with kind of scheduling that and ma mapping that out, but she brought it and she even had um, music picked out and all that. So it was a really awesome event. But here's somebody that put it off and put it off and put it off and finally did it. We had um, only seven people attending. And this is another problem. People think, well, what if I only have a few people in the room? Well, she kept thinking I should just cancel because I only have seven people registered. And a lot of times people feel that way. Like if there's only two people in the room, maybe I should just cancel. And I'm like, no, no. Even if you have one person in the room, do it. Because number one, you're going to learn a ton. You're going to have that chance to practice your content, practicing, saying everything, doing everything with that one person in the room. And you never know that one person could be the one that uh, buys your program or tells everybody else about it. You might change their life. You never know. So that's what I told her, like, we're going to do this event. And if only, if nobody's in the room, we're still going to do it because you're going to practice. So she had seven people registered. She had four people show up, which is actually more than 50% show up rate, which is really, really good. <laughs> she had four people in the room. One of them was a family friend. So it was not a possible client for her at all. She poured out her heart. We spent, this was a three day event. So a three full day event with like four people in the room, but she went for it and, and they had the most amazing time with her deep transformation. And, um, by the end of it, when she made her offer, there were two people in the room and one of them bought her program and it was an $18,000 program. And one person out of two stepped into it with her. Um, and there you go. Right. So that was definitely worth doing, even though there was so few people registered, she, it, and then her confidence just went through the roof and now she's got another one planned for December. Yeah, so <laughs> but, she, she gained the experience. She confirmed her content. She made $18,000 over the weekend. Yep. And, um, and then, and then now she has the confidence to do it again, one more time. And then this time knows whether on how to market it, what to position, yep. and all of those things. Yeah, so that was, the, that was the piece she didn't have down yet. And we're, we're going to, I told her that's you just work on that. And she's already mapped out, she's already getting speaking uh, opportunities to bring people to that event. She's got that plan now, but she's done her event once. She's shared the content. She, uh, you know, got that's that. That's the timing of how long it takes her to yeah. do that and all of those yeah things. and which to leave out and what to put back in and all those things you know like i said earlier you know even like when we were talking about topics like you can even test out your topics that way and just start doing events and seeing what works and what doesn't work and get used to you know being in front of people and talking to people and facilitating um the conversations and then you gain confidence so yeah and she was worried about it being perfect and so many people are you know they worry about well what if it's not all scheduled out, you know, what if, you know, what if I, oh, a big fear, what if something happens with technology in the middle of the event? What if something goes wrong? And I always tell people, well, it will, things will go wrong. And that's part of learning is how to roll with it. One of my events, we were getting ready to get everybody uh, signed up for a coaching session and the calendar thing didn't work. It was live in the event. And I'm saying, go book your coaching session. And it wasn't working. <laughs> and they were only booking with one coach and the other person wasn't getting anybody. And I'm like, well, that's okay. Just go book with him. And when you go get your coaching session, we'll put you in with the other coach. We can work it out. It's not a problem. Just go ahead. <laughs> 
<laughs> so I just had to like go with the flow of what was happening and fix it later. And um, you, you just learn uh, by doing it, like just these things will happen and go. It's okay. Go with the flow. Nobody's really looking for perfection and just be real with people. So yeah, absolutely. And, and the reality is that nobody knows if it's supposed to be some other way, right? Yeah, like, for example, that's true. Uh, right now, like, you know, this because like, we were on the call, like, but I wasn't supposed to be here where I am right now, right? I was supposed to be my to be in my other studio, my computer stopped working. So <laughs> I just ran down to this studio, and I couldn't get the actual background working. So I just blurred my background showed up. If I hadn't said that nobody would know. You know, like yeah. everybody would think that like, oh, this is the way that I was supposed to show up. But, but and, and, and who cares? I mean, at the end of the day, if yeah. we hadn't done this interview because I had a bad hair day or a bad studio day, like the uh, all the transformation, all the all the uh, education, all the thing that you and I did wouldn't happen. Right. All of this content yeah. wouldn't be created for social media and and, you know, and recordings and, and a lot, lots of things wouldn't happen just because um we had a bad studio do we had a bad hair day and so yeah um, you gotta go out there uh share your content um make a difference in the world change people's lives and 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 generate your income that's that's what matters at the end of the day yeah. just doing all of that one way or another yeah also, and I, I, if you focus on that like you're making transformation in people's lives and you are holding space for them to have an experience that's what matters it doesn't right. matter if something goes wrong really it matters about the people in the room and just serve them, you know, and be there with them. And it, it'll all work out one way or the other. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Awesome. Uh, now, uh, I know that many people have tried doing workshops and virtual events and things like that and may not have worked for them. Um, what would you say to those people who have tried it, didn't work out and like, like what's the next thing for them to do? Yeah. I mean, again, we've been talking about, you know, these are learning experiences. So you can either try a workshop and then it doesn't work and you give up on it and don't try it again. Or you can look at it as what can I learn from this? What went well? What worked? What didn't work? What do I need to change? What do I need to adjust and pivot? And so every time I've ever done an event, I look at what, what can I learn from this? How can I make this better? And uh, let me try something different or, uh, yeah, try, try again, Nicole said. So it's so worth doing because as we said at the very beginning, this is a $400 billion industry or soon to be. And if you think about all the gurus out there, all the people that are six, seven and eight figure business owners, for example, who are doing, uh, huge things in the world. How are they selling their programs? How are they presenting to the world what it is they're doing? They're running events, either in person or virtually. That's how they are putting themselves out there. Everybody runs events. It's, it's you, you need to, in my opinion, you need to, in order to get out there, get yourself out there. If you're just relying on posting on social media, it's not, it's not going to create that connection with people in the room with you. Um, whenever, for example, I'm on Alignable. I don't know if you've ever heard of Alignable, but it's a fairly new social media platform. And for some reason, I have a group in there that's growing like crazy. I'm not doing anything to grow it. It's got over 4,000 coaches in it. So what am I going to do to connect with them? Am I just going to rely on them being in my group on Alignable and I'm posting back and forth? No, I'm inviting them into, into events with me. I constantly just invite them into a workshop with me and they're in the room with me. I get to see them. I get to talk to them. I get to find out who they are. They find out who I am and then I can make an offer. <clears throat> and so, yeah, if you've done one before and it hasn't worked, there's a lot of things to look at. You know, maybe the offer wasn't in alignment. Maybe there's some adjustment you can make with your content. Maybe you had too much content. There's just kind of, you know, what can I learn from this? What can I adjust? and um, pivot, you know, how can I pivot to make it better? Let me try something different. Let me try this again. I mean, that's, that's what I've done for the last 10 years. Like, and I've had many events where it didn't do, do well. It failed. I didn't make any sales or there was one workshop I planned at a library, went in there, got everything all set up and I'm waiting and waiting and waiting and nobody showed up. Nobody showed up at all. <laughs> 
So I had to pack it all up and leave. And did I feel bad for the, at first? Yes. But then I sat in my car and I thought, okay, what can I do to make this better? What went wrong here? What can I learn from this? And I just kept going. And there've been many events where I had one person or two people or, you know, you know, it, I just keep doing it and I get better and better and more and more people come more and more people hear about you. Even if you're promoting it out there and not everybody comes, they've heard about it. And those people that registered and didn't show up, they've heard about it. They registered. So maybe the next time they'll come, you're putting yourself out there. You're getting more known and seen and visible. And uh, I can't tell you how many people said, oh, I've been following you for years and I finally came, you know, and I finally am here. So don't ever give up. People yeah. need to hear what you have to share if they want it and they're looking for it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, I mean, we've been doing events for many years, right? Like I started doing events since 2011. Mm -hmm. And I would say over the years, we have had at times events that didn't generate the income that we thought or even didn't generate any, any income at all. And every event, like we spend some money on, right? Mm -hmm. And then when you do a lot of these events, you, you become dependent on the income. Like you're like, well, I'm going to do an event. So I'm going to make like whatever, 50K, 80K, 100K, 200K, right? Then when the money doesn't come, you're like, oh my, like I was counting on it to come, right? Because especially yeah. if you do as many as we do and kind of, right? Um, I tell you, like we have had times, even with our experience, with how, with the number of events that we do as, as like recent as like a couple of months ago that mm -hmm. I did an event and we didn't, we didn't generate any sales, which kind of like is mind blowing for, you know, like, like people that know they're like, Oh my God, how, how, how can people not buy you? Right. But then, but then just so happens. Right. And then, um, and then we continue doing like the week after, like a month after we do another event and um, it generates income. And so sometimes when people are beginning, there is a chance that the first event be the event that ends up not making any income, right? And so mm -hmm. that can be the event that discourages you, but your, I don't know, second one or third one or the fourth one would be the one that starts generating income. I mean, you have a lot of things to learn. And, and again... Um, yeah. Uh, it's an interesting thing because like a couple of months ago when we did that event and didn't generate income, we had some people that were newer to us uh, mm -hmm. in uh, on our team. And they were like, oh my God, like everything is breaking down. Like, no, 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 no. <laughs> we're just going to do another one of these. Exactly the same, like just, just in a month and everything is going to be fine, right? And then we did it and then generated income and they were just like, oh, what changed? <laughs> I'm like, nothing. We're just like, whatever. We didn't need yeah. to, like, it just... It's just, it is what it was. It, it was what it was. But if we would yeah. stop, then we would stop working. Anyways, uh, mm -hmm. just do the necessary work, go to the drawing board, fix the things mm -hmm. and and do it again and again and again. And, and just like keep getting better and um, change people's lives, focus on making, uh, focus, focus on creating the change, make money and all of that. Awesome. So uh, Janelle, I know that... Uh, you have uh, these things called high conversion workshop audit and strategy session. Um, mm -hmm. Can you tell people what it is and how they can get one? Yeah, so that's my offer for you all today is um, just a strategy session with me. And what we're going to do is if you've already done, how many of you wave at me if you've done uh, workshops before? You've done online events so let, you've probably recorded it. Okay. So what I'm offering is that an audit of something you've already done. And I will look at your recording and um, create a list of things that, you know, I feel like you could change or improve on and the things you did really well, an audit of it. And then we'll get on a call and we'll walk through that. And I will give you, you know, tips and strategies and things that um, can make it even better and share with you, you know, what I thought that you did really well. We can talk about what the outcome was. We can talk about your, your plan and purpose for that event. So it's a, it's a workshop audit and strategy session uh, with something you've already created. And if you've never done a workshop before, then it could just be like a strategy session to do your first workshop. So um, that's what my offer is today. It's a an hour with me around your workshop. Awesome. And if again, if you have if they have not done one, then talk about like the idea of it and the structure yeah. of it. How to yeah, definitely. It. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. And can you give us the link for people yes. to book that session with you? Yeah, that would be a, a good idea, wouldn't it? 
right. I mean, it would help a little bit for people to be able to. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there you go. And awesome. it's totally free. Awesome. Um, awesome. Oh. That page doesn't go anywhere. Oh, really? Yeah. Let me see. I can oh. oh, that's weird. Yeah, that is giving us a uh, error. Hmm. Let me see what it is, if I can figure it out for you quickly. What did I do wrong? <clears throat> I have no idea, but that doesn't hmm. uh, workshop mastery.com forward slash RP. Looks right to me, but it I doesn't know. anywhere, right? Um. Hmm. So uh, maybe maybe you didn't click on publish on the back end. You saved it and didn't yeah. Click let me go publish. see. Let me just. Sorry about yeah. that. Guys. But anyways, if you guys if we can't figure out the link uh, tomorrow, we're gonna send the recordings of this session. We're gonna include the link on the recording page. So in case you couldn't get it, uh, you can do that. And generally, you can put your email address also in the chat box, um, okay. and that can that people can also use that. Awesome. Let me try this. I don't know if this would work. And I'll also put my email. Yeah, you can just reach out to me by email. Unsupported no. SSI, SSL. Does that one work? No, that one doesn't work either. Okay. Huh. Unsuspor uns unsupported SSL. Yeah. So maybe that's a newer website and that's not, the SSL is not connected yet. But anyways, it is, um, if you can put your email address for people on the page. First, I put that together right before JVX. So there you go. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. So that. <laughs> yeah. Just email me. Yeah. And we can set it up. Not a problem. Awesome. Perfect. And with that, Janelle, thank you very much for doing this session with us. I really, really appreciate you and all the work that you do. Also, I want to recognize the amazing Becky Askerland here for all the work that she does. Let me bring her here with us on the spotlight. Uh, for all the work that she does, she is the organizer of Entrepreneurs International Network, the person who plans all these things and find the speakers and get them booked and uh, like all the amazing cool things that, it does, uh, that she does. So I just show up and do the interview, but <laughs> Becky is the one who does all the amazing work. So Becky, thank you very much Thanks. for being awesome and amazing. Janelle, Thank you very much. Any final things you want to share? Uh, I would just say, you know, if you're thinking about doing uh, virtual events, just go do it and um, learn from it. And don't uh, don't worry about it being perfect or not, but get yourself out there, share your amazingness with the world and um, have have real connections with people. Let them get to know you. Amazing, amazing, amazing. Thank you very much, everyone. We look forward to seeing you the next week. We have these sessions every single week on Tuesdays from 1 p.m. to 2 p.m. Pacific time. Uh, so you can come and join us every week and you'll get the, all the uh, recordings the day after every event. Enjoy the rest of the day. Have a ton of fun. And we look forward to seeing you at another event, summit, seminar, conference, or whatever else it is. Take care and bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.